livestock to be because we had chickens and we had hogs and and um, and cows and right during, in, yeah. yeah. See, I grew up right in Baldwin yeah. on the street, right across from Baldwin Elementary, and behind my house, my dad we had a, a, a little mini farm yeah. with the chickens and the hogs and the and cows. And cows, and, and that's right, and yeah. that's how we survived. And, and when we would have what was called boucherie during the fall. Uh, everyone in the community, and also uh, my my uh, my father's brother, who was the expert at doing that, they would all get together. And what, they wouldn't kill just just one hog. It was a, a number, you know, because then there was a process of preserving everything so that it would last during those what do you call lean time. And so everyone in the neighborhood. I mean, when that boucherie would take place and they would slaughter, boucherie was a slaughtering of not just one pig, but a number. Everyone in the neighborhood, because I can remember um, my, my mom sending me, as well as my siblings, out, go bring this to Miss so-and-so, go bring this to Miss everybody. And so there was a camaraderie and a sharing in the community that, that helped us all to survive. So we were poor, but yet we were very rich. Very good question. Who's got, Zoe, you got the next question? What are you going to ask? One memory you would never forget from your childhood. I didn't hear the question. One memory you would never forget from your childhood. Oh, I have a lot of memories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a lot of memories. Just a lot of because, uh, as I said, we got along so well with with each other. Everybody looked out for each other. Um, and so I, just, I have a lot of, just a lot of memories. I can't pin it down to one. I think if I had to say something that was extremely memorable, I think there were two things that I, I, I you know, I guess even when dementia sets in, mm -hmm. you know, Alzheimer's, I, I probably will go back to that one was, uh, I remember my mom, I was mischievous, you know, I, I, I was extremely mischievous, I, I, I'll admit that to anyone, and that, I would catch, we didn't catch spanking, we could catch whippings, and it was like, we'd have to go out and the, you know, the crepe myrtles, we had a lot of crepe myrtles, and we'd have to go and pick our own switch, and that's to whip, and we had better, and so um, that became almost, it was like, I, I think I, was, I became immune to it, almost anesthetized, because it's like, okay, we're going to get it over with, and I'd run, I'd run away from whippings, and then by the time I'd get caught, I figured my mom was tired and she would be, and so if the whippings weren't so bad, okay? And so, but the one time I remember, um, she, she was extremely angry at me, and I, I will never, ever forget that. And she didn't make me go out to get a, a half a tree to whip me with it, but she just grabbed me, she shook me. Um, my mom used to, my mom was a stay-at-home mom because we had a large, large family. And um, the kids, our neighbors on either side of us, their mothers worked outside, usually in, in other people's homes, and the kids would always come to us. They would be in our yard because my mom was a stay at home. My mom would, bre would bake homemade bread every, every, every day, and it was called light bread, and it was the best bread. And so uh, I remember one evening telling one of my peers, one of the the neighbor's kids. We had been at our house all day. We played all day after we got our work done. He had been there. He'd had breakfast. He'd had lunch. And he'd come back for my mom's bread. And so, because they do that every day. And uh, I remember, I didn't realize my mom was in the vicinity, but I told him, I said, you know, you need to go, to go back to your house. You need to stay to your house because you're just here to eat up all of our bread. And I didn't realize my mom was behind me when I said this to my peer, and that was, that was me, but I was serious at the time. And so she got extremely angry at me, and she turned me up and whipped me. I thought I had a whiplash, it's like my nail hurt for two weeks. It was like, whip me around, and then she grabs my hand like this, if you can envision, just like 
like this. My hands were closed, and she had a, and she was just shaking me. And it was like, and she goes, I want you to remember, I want you to remember, and she's shaking me very violently. She said, when your hands are closed, nothing leaves, but nothing comes in. We're blessed. We're really blessed. I don't want you to ever help me. My neck was already hurting from when you whipped me around. And she did that. So I remember that lesson. And I, as an adult, I, through the many experiences I've had, I found that to be true. That we can't be selfish. We're not just here for ourselves. That when you do, when you have that selfish stance, where you just want to take and don't want to give, that's now, so that was that was one of I'll never ever forget that, and, and not because you know if y'all see my neck crooked to the side, that's why I had a lasting no. But that was a lesson that I I will always remember. Uh, it's funny now; it wasn't funny at the time. So I guess that if I had to pin it down to an experience, I've had many many experiences. We didn't have great room for these. We got had open. Oh, okay. You know what a wheel is? Yeah. They have a, and they have a long little just like mm -hmm. Brian. Yeah. Uh -huh. And my dad would just say, he'd just point out the back door. You'll get it. I, I would cry all the way to the tree. I had to pull it out. Yeah. When I first started, I would pull the smallest one. Yeah. He would just shake his head. Go back. I knew I had to get along. Yeah. And the whole way back to the house, I had to pull the little leaves off. Oh, yeah. So he could rip, rip. Oh, yeah. I would run. 1965, Hurricane mm -hmm. Betsy. I yeah, was so happy. Not, it blew down <laughs> and destroyed our <laughs> country. Yes, it did. It blew some of our big ones, but it didn't do the, the crate myrtles. Those crate myrtles were stubborn. Oh, oh. But one of my, our, a good memory I have is, is eighth grade. I got my first bicycle. Did I treasure that bicycle? Yes. A swim, and um, about ten years ago, my wife gave me a Christmas present. She gave me a reproduction Schwinn bicycle from the 1950s. I love my bicycle. Mine was a Western Flyer. Oh, I with yeah. my sister. Western Flyer. But I'll show you a, a school yeah. memory that sticks with me to this day. Fourth grade teacher. In those days, fourth grade, your teacher, one teacher in the school was also the principal. You didn't have a prince, separate principal. So I'm our fourth grade teacher was Miss Kramer. Did all like Miss Kramer? No, no. I mean, she was getting ready to. Our class was her last class. One day I'm sitting in my desk and I'm playing with my shoe while she's whatever she's doing, and I tie my shoelace to the desk, just playing, and she nodded. And I couldn't get it undone. <laughs> That's not the bad part. Ten minutes later, he comes somebody down the hall with the bell. We didn't have a bell. They, they, rang. they rang the bell down the hall from recess. They were coming down the hall to ring a bell. Somebody's coming down the hall. Five real! Five real! Five real! <laughs> I'm like this. Miss Kramer, my shoe's tied to my desk. I can't do this. <laughs> She brought all the kids out. She turned to me and said, you can just burn. <laughs> oh, Walk out the room and close the door. <laughs> I was all good. My mom had to come get me from school. I was all I was all the teacher I ever had in my whole history of school that I didn't like. <laughs> I don't know, my birthday. And then, end of the year, every other class she ever took, she was she was a very rich lady. She was from a very rich family in, in Franklin, the Kramers. Oh, yeah. She had a big, on the other side of the main street in Franklin, got all those big, beautiful houses. And she lived in one of the ones in the end, and she had this get back pasture in the back of her house, and she had two horses. Every other class she had, they got to the last day of school, she brought everybody to her house to have a big picnic mm -hmm. and ride the horses, came to our class, we, had, we were looking forward to that. She says, I'm old and I'm tired. We're not going anywhere this year. <gasps> so we didn't get the chance to ride the horses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
My first grade teacher. With my first grade teacher. We didn't have kindergarten when no, I was in, no. in school. And it was at Mary Hines. Uh, Mary Hines went from first through eighth. And my first grade teacher, I had, I had not gone to kindergarten. There was no such, there was one, air, one place nearby that offered kindergarten for black students, uh, African American, whatever. I can't even remember what we were called during that time. It wasn't, <laughs> okay, girl. But anyways, uh, it was Thank you, Rob. Um, but that you had to pay and you had to provide the transportation because you didn't have public. So I didn't go to kindergarten, first grade, and I really, so first grade was a, a big adjustment for me because not just academically, it was more social, it was a social adjustment with me than academic because my mom was always one that she believed in reading and she worked with us. Uh, she was a, a, a big advocate, she and my father both on education and learning. But anyways, uh, my first grade teacher, who shall stay named this, but she probably has some relatives. That's because she's dead. But she was, she screamed. She had this high-pitched voice, and she just screamed, screamed, screamed. And my mom was the complete opposite. My mom was very soft-spoken, and even though she whipped, but it's like she wouldn't scream at you when she whipped. She'd be too. And like, you know, you're not. I just think different. But anyways, uh, my first grade teacher was, I was afraid of, definitely afraid of her. She screamed, she screamed, she screamed. And I was afraid to ask, and I had to go to the, the restaurant. And I can remember, it's like having my hand up and just, and it's like just being, speak, you have an experience where you're so afraid that you, you're paralyzed. It's like you, you, you're not just you're physically paralyzed, but you're thinking and your speech, you can't articulate. And, um, and so I had my hand up, and, and I mean, she screamed, what do you, you know, what, what, what do you want? You had to run the internet, so like, I, I, I just couldn't speak. Come here, she screamed. So, she was yeah, yeah, she did. Oh, she had been so <laughs> afraid, that's why I don't like screaming. And all I, I remember doing was walking up, and she gave this awful gift. What is wrong with you? Are you retarded? Because they would call you retarded, and you wear dunce caps and all sorts of things. And all I can remember is just wedding right on myself in front of the class. And after that, I was no good. I didn't want to go to school. Can you imagine it being an adjustment? After that, I didn't want to go to school. <laughs> I mean, just in front of the desk, in front of the class, I was in. She's screaming, and it just, that was the only thing that wasn't paralyzed on <laughs> The river flowed, so, it was, so you can imagine after that day, every day was a fight to go to school. That was the that was miserable. That first that miserable. But thank God I had a second grade teacher who was the complete opposite. Because I think I would not have I would have dropped out of school before I dropped in. You know. So yeah, I'll never forget that. So what if you just walked out of the well, they beat you to a pulp, and then you, it got home, and you got beat yeah. again. What was left of you, you know, they whip you, and then you probably spend the rest of the day scrubbing out the the restroom. And then when you got home, it was another beating. Because you see, as I said before, there was a wholeness in the community. What you heard at home, you heard in church, and you heard in school, in regards to behavior and how you're supposed to conduct yourself. And so there was no polarization. There was no dissension in the camp. You got in trouble at school, and it, they, there was no text. There was no email. The phones wasn't even private. It was a party line. You get on, I'm trying to get in. You hear, it, there may be three other people trying to talk. Okay? But the information would... It was amazing, and I'm, I'm, I still can't figure out, because by the time I thought about asking my mom how that was so, what was that communication line she, dementia had set in, or she wasn't saying. But information would, the, the information system was amazing, because most of the time, if you cut up in church, that got, because I, I was Catholic and I was one of the few black Catholics in the Sheraton area. And even the church was segregated. And you went to church every day. There was math every day. 
and we went as kids. If if my mom couldn't make it to mass, we had to go to mass. And some of the mass was in Latin. We didn't understand what was going on. But if we misbehaved in church, it some sort of way it got home before we did. And and our house was walking distance from the church. As a matter of fact, it's down the street from the church cemetery in Shanta. But we because we had we did misbehave. On a couple occasions, and she was waiting. She got the news. You misbehaved at school. You got it at school. You got it at home. Yes. Yeah, where the Chittimacha uh, uh, Court is. That Chittimacha Court used to be the elementary school, the white elementary school in Sheraton. That used to be Sheraton on the, the white um, elementary school in Sheraton, and Mary Hines was the school for the black students in Shannon. Yeah, you're right. And, and Ball, and Ball Elementary was for the whites, right. and, and GW was for the blacks. Yes, yes. Did you see all the same changes in here? Uh-oh, big. We started with, I mean, radio. radio. We started with, that was the, the big form of entertainment, and I can remember we were one of the few black families in Sheraton who had the radio that, and the, um, not, well, maybe I shouldn't say just the radio, but the antenna or the mechanism to get broadcasting. And I can remember that people in the community, when the fights would go on, oh, that was a big thing. They'd come in and listen to the fight, and then we progressed from the radio to cult, not color TV, white black TV. and white TV. Boy, that was a big thing. Black and white TV. And in regards to um, domestic things, I, we started, I can remember all of us participating in helping to, can you imagine with all of us, we had to wash the washboard. Ooh. And when the wash machine came with the ringer, mm -hmm. boy, we thought we were, you couldn't touch us. You know, so take not babies. It's like from dinosaur to what? My mom, um, would, my mom would wash the clothes. She, my mom would get up at 4 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning and wash clothes. Guys would hang? Before we went to school, my brother and I, to hang. one week, I would have to take all the clothes and go put them on the clothesline outside wow. before school. And then my brother would have to, after school, before he did anything, had to come and take all the clothes off and fold in the next week. Which I would, he would come in the morning before school and hang out all the clothes, and then I would have to go in and fold all the clothes before he even did anything else. Yeah. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And it was an assembly line with us because there were so many of us in the assembly line, you know. And then I would, our, our TV, when we first, I, I think I was in ninth grade, I was in high school, when we got our first TV, black and white. white TV. And you had to have an antenna on the outside of your house. And when the, the TV all said it would just go snow white, you could, all you could see was snow. My dad would say, go turn the antenna. Uh, yeah, and you have to go, go outside, outside and you have to turn. And then my brother was like a relay system. I was outside with the antenna. My brother was at the door and my dad was Some more. Not said, enough. No, not enough. Turn, 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 a little bit more. A little bit more. To the right. No, to the left. That yeah, was good on a nice though. sunny day. Yeah. But when it was pouring down rain, you still had to go outside and turn the antenna. Oh, you, you got, oh, you we, didn't get I was first, Please, Lord, please, let it be right the first time. <laughs> I didn't want to stand out there in the soaking rain yeah. and you turn that antenna until they would... I tell you got a reception. Look, I got a question about that, since yeah. they're not going to think to ask you this. No. How many TV stations you guys got over here? I don't think they had any local stations. No, no local stations. So There's would y'all get Lafayette ABC, or would you get Baton Rouge? I, I ABC, 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 ABC. I don't remember NBC too much. I remember ABC and CBS. CBS. So it was, oh, it was, it was Channel 3 and Channel 10 in Lafayette. Yeah. That was it. But then it wasn't local. I don't remember because I can remember you did even local meaning um, not just like Tesh Talk. I'm mm -hmm. talking the um, the local stand channels like channel Lafayette, three. Yeah. Channel 3, Channel 10. That, that came in later. Uh, I might have been in college, maybe 1970s, early 70s, because my sister used to watch Michi Mae. Yeah, yeah. And that was Channel 10. That was a local. But before that, you didn't have it was, was national, because I can remember just national news at 5 o'clock, then 5 o'clock, and then after that, it was like Western, the one Western. I don't like Western. No, Royal High. Oh, Royal High? Yeah, Royal High, and Wagon Train, and, you know, yeah, Roy Rogers, yeah. Uh, the 
long range. Long range. Couldn't stand my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all you look. We didn't. There were no, no, no TVs in the bedroom, and the, and TV didn't go on until my dad got home with us, and that was the national news, and then those those westerns, and it's like. That's no technology what in school. No. Uh -uh. Oh yeah. Not, they did. not even a calculator. Yeah, slate. Yeah. yeah. Chalk. Chalk. Okay. Who else has a question? Lace or Deontay? Yes. Um, how do you explain Stephen Did your parents explain Stephen Fair or did they did you touch you as much? I, I think I kind of answered that. We had, you know, you had conflict. You you'd have little con because we were individuals, just like you guys are individuals, but. It's the, it, it's like okay you had your little argument if you had to you had a little fight that was it if parenting proceed it was like everybody got a beating and you learned to get along <laughs> okay because you know parents would come in and it's like you know better than you don't be fighting each other what are you gonna be fighting and everybody got a beating and then that was it it was a squash so you learn and I, I think that really helped us to develop those interpersonal skills that, you know, that has been so also, helpful, you know. Um, like at school today, I know y'all have little cliques. Yeah. Got this little group of mm -hmm. girls, these little group of boys. We didn't have any of that. We never had a clique. Everybody played with everybody mm -hmm. growing up. All the way all the from high school. There was none of the clique. Well, a little bit in high school because we, we had to go from ball when so and then different we had to go to Frank and Franklin. There was nobody rich in Baldwin. No. Very few. No. Baldwin was where the, all the rich people went. In, in all, so all these little Franklin. rich doctors, children, everything in Franklin, they were clicky. That was the first time I experienced. Mm -hmm. But growing up in, in the elementary school, we all played. Nobody. And it was more than an individual thing. If yeah. you had people that were just had, you know how some people just have, they're miserable for whatever reason. And they don't see good or niceness. They always see ugliness, and they want to cause trouble. You did, you did have that, but it wasn't on the scale that we see now. And those people, we'd shut them down. We'd shut them down when they come with that, you know, foolishness. Because we knew that the end result was that if we had altercations, you didn't fight at school. That was one of those other things that you just didn't do. Because you get beat down at school and you got beat down at home. And the troublemakers weren't yeah. accepted, remember, in no. second or third, fourth grade. Yeah. We had a boy with us, and he was like this, today a gang member, if you want to call yeah. him a gang member. He was like this, this Rough. thug. He wanted, he wanted, he wanted and he came to school one day with a mohawk. Did they finish the car? Everybody just... Yeah. Like, didn't want to have anything to do with him. I think my whole rest of my elementary school, he was known as the thug uh, yeah. of school. And nobody, because he came to school with his hair in the in the hall. And then if you got caught around those oh, yeah, persons you, you didn't who were, even think about hanging no. around. And then I just said, because even in the neighborhood, you know, the, pe the, 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 the older people in the neighborhood, if they see you hanging around what they consider you didn't have a whole lot of those that were headed for trouble. That's yeah, how they exactly. say yeah. headed for trouble. He's headed for trouble. He's headed for trouble because their behavior was unacceptable. Okay? And so if you got caught around them in the neighborhood they tell you the older people may not have known your name, but they knew who you belonged to. Oh, you John Liza daughter. I know they don't know you hanging around with them. <laughs> when that outlaw, oh, and guess what do you think happened? It got home before you got home. So it was the system in there. It was just, you know. And as I said, what you, the, the, the uh, behavior, expectations that were at home, you heard about it in school, and it was in church. There was no confusion. You knew how you were supposed You didn't go to school to be disciplined. You acted up, boy, you were in trouble at school, and Lord help you at home. Okay? Someone else got a question? Javante. How was segregation back then? Um, 
you know, we can give it to you from um, a white person's perspective. I can only give it to you from a black. I think it was worse in other places because, as I said, there was a, a, a mechanism in place where you had some that got along. But maybe it, it was it was really hard because if you can think about being ostracized, and when I say ostracized, you know how when your friends, all of you, you want to fit, you want to get along, and when people leave you out, that's, it, it, it's really hard, and that's how it was to be segregated. Segregation was hard, but what was worse was the labeling. The labeling was worse than that. When people would look at you, and merely because you were black or African American, and those terms, I don't worry about that because believe you me, there were so, uh, the, the terms that were placed on us, the derogatory and nasty terms that were placed on us, um, makes African American and black seem real beautiful, yeah. you know? But it, it was hard. Um, believe it or not, there were some, as, and if any of you are familiar with Sherrington, It's not a big place, but there were some areas in Sherrington that blacks, you didn't walk by yourself. You did not walk by yourself because you had people who had such a profound hatred because they were taught that of, of blacks that they didn't have to know you. They saw you and you were black and they would harm you, okay? Uh, Young black men couldn't, hitchhiking was a thing you didn't do. You know, hitchhiking was a thing that you didn't do. I can remember my brothers, my older brothers, my dad, that was a complete no-no. Uh, when they were in high school in Franklin, some could not participate in the extracurriculum because, as I said, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, she didn't drive. The way my dad worked, there was not a system in place to go and pick them up. Many times the teachers, the teachers would help out. Because as far as hitchhiking from Franklin to Sheraton, that was an absolute no-no. Because believe it or not, even in this area, you had people who were capable of catching a black male by himself and doing some very atrocious things. You know, I, I think if you guys had the opportunity, to, probably your grandparents wouldn't even remember. If you had privilege to your great-grandparents, they could tell you they probably know some black males who mysteriously drowned. They found them in, in the Bayou Tesh. They mysteriously drowned. So it, it wasn't an easy thing as far as school was concerned. The, it was supposed to be separate but equal, meaning that we had equal resources as the white, and that was not true because actually, uh, I can remember that the books we would get would be the books that were when the white schools would have, I guess, a textbook mm -hmm. adoption. Their old books would come to us. So it was not separate, but equal. Uh, I, I, I'm going to use this as an example to see, uh, to try to kind of get you guys to, to at least try to understand the thought about blacks during that time. I can remember in elementary school we had, um, our teachers were all black. The principal was black. But we had, went, there was the white supervisor. The white supervisor would come, not often, but periodically to the school. The white supervisor. <clears throat> I remember our taking the, when I was in school, we had to take the, the, no, the, the California Achievement, Achievement Test. Achievement. We had to take the CAT test, the California Achievement Test. Now, we never knew. We just knew it was an important test. We never got results. We just knew it was a test that we had to take at the end of the school year, and that was that. I can remember um, 
me as well as two other of my classmates. One day we went to school and this was after, because you know, it was like it's time test and it was like, we were so glad when, just like you guys feel about testing, you're so glad when it's over with, you know what I mean? And I can remember going into school and our principal, who was a, a black male, called me and two other of my classmates and told us that we were going to take the California Achievement, we had to take the California Achievement test again. And that he didn't want us to be afraid, but that the white supervisor was coming to administer the test. And so, unfortunately, I was always a why, who, what, what, and why, and sometimes that would get me in trouble because I'd get slapped in my mouth. But I asked the question, well, why is that? We took the test already. We didn't know what we had done, but they wouldn't give us for it. Okay? I, now I, I asked why, and he said, don't you worry about why. All you need to know is you're going to take the test again, and I want you to do the same thing you do just as you did the first time you took the test. And so that's what happened to us, it was three of us. And the white supervisor, Mr. Goodwill, mm -hmm. came in. You want to remember he had that red? red. Okay, bird mark on his face. He came in and he administered the test, and that was it. We weren't told anything. I found out because I was an eavesdropper. I was one of those kids that I would I'd get under the house and I'd listen when those people would be talking or. I'd, I'd be to the window and I was curious, okay? I was curious. But I eavesdropped and I heard because I had a sister who was working at the school, an older sister. And I heard her tell my parents, now they never told me anything, but I heard her tell my parents and then I later, when I got older, I investigated that. But I heard her tell my parents that the three of us had scored so high on the California Achievement Test until they believed the teacher cheated and gave us the answer because there was no way three black kids could score that high on that test. And so that's why the white supervisor came and had we not done the same or better, they were going to fire the teacher because they, they just knew she had cheated and given us the answer. So I heard we, you know, we did the same, you know. And so that gives you an idea of the thought that they felt that, that we were inferior because we belonged to, to this group of people that we were really, really inferior and incapable of the same abilities and aptitudes as any, and that was more hurting than anything else. And we were taught yeah. to disrespect the black people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, remember, I grew up on John Street in Baldwin. The end of our street was G.W. Hamilton, which is the black school. And so that was like the beginning of the black community in Baldwin, from G.W. Hamilton back across it. That, that was the black. And I don't know why, but at the end of the street, all whole, our whole street was white people. Except the one in the corner, right in front of G.W. Hamilton, was a black, an old black man that lived there by himself. And um, me, and I was always taught to respect people. I mean, so one day he was in the yard and he needed some help. And I just walked across the street and I, I think it was a trench can or something. And um, he said, do you need help? He said, I appreciate it. So I picked up the trench can and sometime we in and I said, yes, sir. When he asked me a question, I said, yes, sir. For a moment. The neighbor across was my, my girlfriend's mom across the street. Hold on, boy, you, well, you in trouble. Oh, when I got home, before I even got down the street, my mom said, Why in the H E L L did you tell that man, yes, sir? And it's like, I just couldn't understand that. I mean, and that love was up. But that's the way, and, that's the way they were and, and I love my parents to death, mm -hmm. but that's the way the, the older white people taught mm -hmm. their children. Taught their we children. were not taught to respect mm -hmm. anybody that wasn't our age. And it wasn't just the blacks, mm -hmm. it was the Indians. Yeah, so, oh yeah, the anybody Indians. that wasn't white, that's we right. were not to respect okay. any of them. Mm -hmm. And I got, mm -hmm. my, 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 mama didn't, my mama never whipped me or anything. 
Is the whole thing, wait till daddy gets home. And I mean, you even All my had daddy to, did was walk mm -hmm. in the house and yeah. what I had to go do. Yeah, when, they, when they put the little sidewalks in Charrington, I remember, it was right in front of her grand, there's a, a walk in front of you guys. I remember when we would walk, if whites were walking, we were going opposite, or even together, if whites, and when we approached the whites, or the whites approached us, we had to get off of the sidewalk. We had to get off of the sidewalk. To give them or on Main that. Street in Baldwin, yeah. if, if we were walking on Main Street in Baldwin, the blacks had to go across the street. street. They had to cross the street because they couldn't walk in the same yeah. side of the street. Mm -hmm. so, no, we right. All right, uh, since the bell just rang, I call Miss Diane, so if they're party, they're okay. Yeah. Guys, thank you guys very much. Um, uh, guys, when you come sixth period, after we take the quiz, we're going to talk about this stuff in class since we went okay. into the bell, okay? Uh -huh.